Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the COPAC Daily Financial Wellness webcast. I know we have some new folks with us, and uh, some have come back to join us for another program. As you may know, we broadcast every day, except maybe holidays. From 2 to 2.30, our guest speaker uh, presents and has a conversation with us. And then, particularly at 2.30, we'll go into a question and answer mode at that point. Now, you can ask questions throughout the program. We may get to those, or we may defer those till 2.30. But uh, please feel free to question uh, the guest speaker as we go along. Uh, my name is Jerry Snyder, and I'll be your host today. Uh, Jay Linder and myself share those duties. And today we have a LinkedIn specialist, Jeff Young, and I'm going to be introducing him very shortly. Before that, I do want to mention that a number of our guest speakers do uh, or are involved with the financial industry, and they also, some of them serve on the board of directors of COPEC. Therefore, we do want to make some disclosures to that effect. And so I'm actually going to be silent for about 45 seconds or a minute, uh, giving time to, to look that over, and then I'll rejoin you very briefly. Well, thank you for your attention to that. Um, for you new folks in particular, uh, these programs are brought to you uh, by COPEC, stands for the Central Ohio Professional Education Council. It is a nonprofit organization, uh, started about 2004, and it has the strict uh, mission of providing good educational programs without the fear of any sales tactics or marketing exposure. Um, these are live stream programs, obviously. Uh, therefore, once in a while, we do have a connection type problem with the broadcast. If that is to occur, just if you'll be patient, we'll get things up and running again. Hopefully, that, that will not occur. Like I said, we're daily, except for maybe holidays. Um, and I do want to mention, if for some reason you're part of an organization or a company that uh, is within their department or something that would like to share these programs, please feel free to to do that and to uh, uh, notify us of your interest in, in that. Uh, also on the right of this um, particular slide, you can see many of our expert speakers that we have throughout the year uh, on various topics of, uh, of interest, hopefully, for you. Now, I do want to make special note of our website. It's the copeceducation.org website. And there, once you go into that, you'll see the financial wellness portal. You probably did that when you signed in today. But I wanted to talk about a, a couple different tiles uh, to make these programs available to you. The first one, of course, is what you we're doing today, the COPEC Daily Webcast. We have actually programmed uh, out through the end of the year on our daily programs. And you can kind of look at a month in advance to see if any of those programs particularly interest you. Of course, we, we hope you join us each day, but um, so that you can online look ahead uh, as you're doing now and looking at the upcoming programs and speakers. Another tile talks about retirement decisions. That is a, another program we have. It's kind of an in-depth program for retirement in general, and we get into in-depth and really talk about all related issues involving approaching retirement. Um, we've had those at the Fawcett Center uh, for, for now. Um, we'll probably have more of those uh, on Zoom as well. And then we have what we call Financial Fridays. Uh, those are every Friday at uh, 11 o'clock and you can tune in on that and get more in-depth uh, conversation about these topics that we'll be presenting. And so it's a 50 minute more uh, deep dive into, into these topics. Um, also, as I mentioned, again, if you have any of these programs, whether they're the Friday programs or daily, that you'd like to bring into your organization or your company, feel free to do that and contact us accordingly. 
And then very important, there's another tile which permits you to access or request 15 minute individual consultations with most, if not all of our speakers uh, at any time or following the programs themselves. You may have a question that didn't quite get answered fully, or perhaps you have more of a personal or private type question uh, that we can address in that manner. So do take advantage of that as well. So again, thanks for your patience of those introductions. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Jeff Young. As you see here, he is well known in the community for these LinkedIn programs. We call him the LinkedIn guru, of course. And uh, so Jeff, welcome. And what are you gonna really uh, center in on today's topic? Well, it says today's topic is QuickBooks discussion. I don't think so. Uh, that was a that was a holdover. Uh, what we're actually going to be talking about, and the the question that I've asked is is how do I even get started on LinkedIn? Okay, so we're going to talk about LinkedIn today, and any question is fair game. So if you've got a question, Jerry, or someone else in the audience has a question, please drop it in the Q and A. Jerry's going to be watching it for me uh, because I'm going to be trying to to show you a few things that are related to LinkedIn and how you get started on LinkedIn. Okay, does that sound Very like fun? Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, so first of all, let's step back and talk about when I talk about getting started on LinkedIn, I am not talking about going to LinkedIn.com and establishing an account. That's the, the mechanics of, of setting up an account. I'm going to make an assumption that everybody on this call actually already has a LinkedIn account. Many people have a LinkedIn account. As a matter of fact, as of last count, uh, the numbers on LinkedIn were actually over 706 million people are actually on LinkedIn. So I'm going to assume that you've already got an account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to help you with an approach to LinkedIn as to how to get started and what to do first, what to do next, what to do maybe third, okay, and, and get started and actually utilize the tool. Uh, I pretty much am, am also assuming that everybody understands exactly what LinkedIn is because it's a networking tool. It's a social media tool. Uh, it is a great marketing tool. It is a great branding tool. All of those kinds of things are out there uh, and, and useful on LinkedIn as well. But more than anything else, um, I think that, that what, I'm, what I want to talk about in terms of the approach is, well, uh, you may you may not have noticed, ha ha ha, but you know I'm 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 rather I'm rather old. Okay, I've been retired actually for 12 years, and so and, and the interesting thing about it is that you know when I first started uh, doing this kind of thing, uh, I actually used to introduce myself by saying I'm retired, and everybody would I always say, oh Jeff, you look too young to be retired. Okay, well now when I introduce myself as being retired, people go, oh that's very nice for you, because now I look like I should be retired, I guess. But anyway. Uh, the point being is that I, I'm kind of old and back in the dark ages, when I went to school, there was this thing called the, the three R's. Now, I know they probably don't even, for the millennials in the crowd, you don't know what that is because you pro they probably don't even teach that in, in, in school anymore. But back in the day, the three R's were reading, writing, and arithmetic. Okay, and that, were the, that was the basics. Reading, if you could read, if you could write, if you could, if you could do math, you were, you were all well on your way for, for the basics. And oh, oh, and oh, by the way, for a kid from Circleville, Ohio, there actually was a fourth R. There was reading, writing, arithmetic, and Route 23 North to the Ohio State University, uh, which is actually not a path that I actually ended up <laughs> taking, but, but that, was, that was what they always told me that I should do, is, is, is that, that fourth R. So when it comes to LinkedIn, I'm gonna cover three things, but I'm not gonna call them the three R's. I'm gonna call them the three P's, okay? And I'm gonna go into the three P's and I'm gonna give them to you right now, okay? So if you wanna write them down, they are profile, people, and participate, okay? And I'll come back to them in just a second, but I'm gonna share my screen here. And, and again, the, the object is to get started on LinkedIn and one of the places that people usually don't know where things are on LinkedIn is even how to find help on LinkedIn. So the very first thing I'm going to show you is how to find help on LinkedIn. Jerry, if you don't mind, I'm going to take the screen. Here we go. And I'm going to drop out here and share my screen. And you should now see my LinkedIn screen. So 
here we go. And I'll show you that one of the things that people can never find on LinkedIn, and, and, and again, this is, we're in a virtual world now, so I do all these things by Zoom now. But in, in the old days, B, BC, that was before Corona, okay? Uh, I used to do these in front of people. And when I would do these in front of people, I put this, up, put this picture up on the, 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 the presentation, up on the, the, the uh, projector. Uh, in front of the, the class, and I would say, somebody show me the help button on LinkedIn. And everybody would look around, and they'd try to find it, and you know, if they were lucky, they might actually see it, but no, it's not there, okay? So the first thing that I would say is, that, well, LinkedIn loves to hide stuff, and one of the things that LinkedIn hides is the help button. So under me, if you remember that if you're asking LinkedIn for help, you are asking LinkedIn to help me, Okay, help me, if you point at me and click on link uh, on me, you should find help as the pull down right there. Everybody see that one? Okay, so if you click help, what that will do is open up another little box that you can use for help or what I in many instances do is open it up as another tab. Okay, so I've got a full list of things that I can get access to. And then when you wanna ask LinkedIn for help, basically you can click in the search bar, type in what it is that you want help on, something like recommendations as an example, and just press the enter key. And I gotta tell you folks, LinkedIn help is actually pretty good. I used to be an IT geek. Well, I'm still an IT geek to a certain extent, but uh, when I was designing systems back in the old days, I used to have to design help systems as well. And I, I'll tell you what, LinkedIn help is really great. It's really one of the better help systems I've ever seen. The trouble is you can't find it, or at least it would be great if you could actually find it. So now that you know how to find help, okay, you can find help on any topic that you want out here. And just asking LinkedIn about how to do recommendations on LinkedIn brings up this whole page of all kinds of neat stuff about recommendations. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's how to find help on LinkedIn. Okay, now let's back up and let's talk about that approach to LinkedIn again. First of all, there are certain things that you probably should start with because, as I said, the three P's are profile, people, and participate. So let's talk about profile. Okay, your profile on LinkedIn is like having your own personal web page. If you go to your profile on LinkedIn, people should be able to see on your profile and get a great deal of information about you and what it is that you do. Uh, as far as a business, as far as, a, as far as what you, the value that you add, and those types of things. And it should be treated like a web page. It's got graphics, it's got stuff that's there. And the most important things on your profile, again, it all starts with your profile. The most important things on your profile are the things that you can see right here on this first page without scrolling anywhere else, okay? And that is this banner, your profile picture, of course your name, because your name is important in, in getting found. This piece, which is called your professional headline that I've just highlighted here, okay? Your about section, which is basically a summary. It used to actually be called a summary. And the about section will give people about you, okay? And then <clears throat> possibly the featured section here, which is where you can actually feature some of the graphics and those kind of things that you want to, to do. Now, by the way, I'm gonna talk about this in terms of what I featured here as well. As far as your profile is concerned, look, I've only got about 20 to 30 to, to, uh, to a half, 45 to, to, to 60 minutes to help you with whatever I, I can help you with on LinkedIn. So I can almost guarantee you that I'm not going to be able to tell you everything you need to know about LinkedIn in just the time that we have to get. So that's why I showed you the help. Another place that I want you to find help is on my profile. If you're interested in getting more LinkedIn tips or, get, or, or answering your own LinkedIn questions, go to my profile, scroll down my profile because you're gonna see all kinds of featured things that I've got on my profile that are graphics that you can get access to, other kinds of things out there as far as help is concerned on LinkedIn. And one of the things that I want you to, to point you to is this one right here. As you look at, if you scroll down to my featured section, scroll over just a little ways to get to the third one here, here is something that I feature on my profile that is actually not even mine. It's by a fellow LinkedIn trainer who's a lady I know by the name Shelly Elsliger, who is in actually Toronto, Canada. And I point people to this all the time because this is a great assessment. If you scroll down, find this on my featured section, click on it, it will open up an article 
that you can then look at and it is actually a way to tell you how LinkedIn you really are, how good you're doing on LinkedIn. And it literally has 120 questions that are yes, no questions that will help you answer and assess yourself as to whether or not you're doing the right thing on LinkedIn. If you look at a question and you answer yes, you're doing fine. If you look at a question and you answer no, you're not doing fine. So when we're talking about profile, do you have a customized background photo? That was that, that, was that banner that was on, my, on, on my, my, uh, my, my LinkedIn profile. Is your tagline, that's, that's a professional headline, is that got a unique value proposition in it? Does your about section start with an enticing two line opener? Okay. Do you market your top three skills, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And literally there are a hundred questions out here that you can actually answer yes or no to. And if you answer yes, you're doing great. If you answer no, you maybe consider, ought to consider making a change to your LinkedIn profile. Jerry, I'll pause for a second. Did you have any questions? Uh, you're muted. Sorry. That happens all the time. They're cutting our grass here locally, so I, I did mute to keep down the noise. But um, yeah, Jeff, uh, my question would be this, and you may want to defer on it, but a lot of people use this for job search, I think, and also maybe just for gen general networking for business reasons. Are those the two top reasons? Are there other reasons why people use this service? Those are probably the top two reasons. LinkedIn was actually created originally, and 60% and of LinkedIn's actual income still comes from, from recruiting services. But salespeople use it, uh, business people use it. Uh, it. It's really blossomed to, and when it was originally around, I mean, it's actually been around since May of 2003. So for the first few years, it was actually a recruiting tool. So it was for people who were actually looking for a job. But that has changed so much, Jerry, you're absolutely right. People now put their profiles out there because they are advertising, because they are marketing, because they are trying to network. Okay, and we're going to get to a little bit more about networking here when we get to the second P, which is people. Okay, but but yes, it is much much more than that. It is a branding tool. It is a networking tool. It is a marketing tool. It is an advertising tool. And so, literally, your profile, you know, can showcase your services, can showcase what you do, can showcase you as an individual. And, and people use it like that all the time. And this is really what a profile is actually about a person. There's a separate place on LinkedIn for a company page. Okay, so there's a, there's a company page on LinkedIn as well. But you know what? People don't buy from companies, people buy from people. Therefore, that's why the profile and your personal profile is the most important thing. Does okay, that make sense? Okay, so let's talk a few seconds now about the, the second P, which is people. And when I talk about people, what I'm really talking about is networking with people and really connecting with people. Jerry and I are connected. Jay and I are connected. Okay, a lot of the other folks that I've known in the 11 plus years, I think it's been about 11 and a half years that I've been a part of Copec now, which is kind of amazing to me. Uh, and it's really great to be working with you guys on a regular basis again. Um, the, those folks are, I'm already all connected with, okay? So I've, I've reached out to them, I've connected with them because we have a common background, that common background being COPEC. So it's a great thing for you to find other people who have a like background of yours that might be, you know, it, but, but it's also a very diverse tool. I'm connected with a lot of people out there that don't do what I do. And that is, is very helpful as well. As a matter of fact, I'm connected with many, many people in the United Kingdom, many people in India, many people in Australia. So it is a global networking tool as well. And one of the things that I want to point out is that if you go to my profile, okay, and do this afterwards, please look me up afterwards. As a matter of fact, if you really want to see a lot of my stuff, before I go much further, I will do this. I will go here and I will actually tell you that you should actually go to Google and you should type in hashtag the LinkedIn guru. Make sure you get the, the LinkedIn guru, okay? Because LinkedIn guru was already taken, but my hashtag is hashtag the LinkedIn guru. If you type that into Google and actually do that search, you're gonna see a ton of stuff that is about me and from me, including my tip of the week website, including a link to my actual profile. All those things are there as well. So 
that's something that, that hopefully can help you as well as you go through this process. But we're yeah, talking Jeff, about connecting Jeff, I, with people. I just, and I just want to mention that all these offers, which are wonderful, you're not, you're not doing this for profit or, or for- Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. No, I mean, uh, that's one of the, the affinities that I've always had with COPEC is because COPEC's mission is to provide free education to the public. And right. that's exactly what I do. For, for the last 12 or 13 years, I've been providing free, free LinkedIn education to the public. And as you can see on my, on my background uh, photo here, it says I've actually done a, a approximately 200 free LinkedIn seminars in the last three years, and I'm still counting. As a matter of fact, this one, I was mentioning to Jay and, and, and Jerry before, this one is my 40th seminar of the year. Uh, so I, I, I love to do LinkedIn seminars, and I love to do them for COPEC in particular. So now let's finish off on people. Okay, first of all, you can look people up. My, my recommendation is that if you, if you have got somebody that you want to connect with, just go ahead and, and actually look them up and, and type in their name and actually go for it and, and, and actually connect with them. So for example, if, if the lady I talked to earlier today, Melissa, Melissa Gaines was someone that I wanted to be connected to in Boston, Massachusetts, the best way to do this is, well, first of all, we haven't talked about this concept, but the best way to do all of LinkedIn is really on a desktop, not on your phone, because it's very, very difficult to do all the editing and all the other stuff on your phone. So the desktop browser is a, a lot more, a lot better. But the best way to connect with someone on LinkedIn is on your desktop browser, go to their profile and click the connect button. Okay, because if you, because if you click the connect button, it will actually give you the opportunity to add a note and then you can send that note to Melissa. And that's the proper etiquette when you're trying to connect with someone. Even if it's someone that you've known for years, you should send them a message and say what it is that you thought would be a great idea for you to connect about, okay, as an example. So connecting with people is a really good idea that way as well. Now, another place that you can find some people to connect with is up here under this icon called My Network. If you click on My Network, LinkedIn will bring up your open invitations that people have sent you, but it will also then as you scroll down, show you people that you may have worked closely with based on your profile. And by the way, the better your profile is, the better that these suggestions will be. People you may know that have been at Columbus State Community College, because I went to Columbus State Community College. People that I might know that are from the Columbus, Ohio area, as an example. Okay, all of these people are, are all possibilities out here. So th this will give you tons and tons and tons of recommendations. My recommendation though, is that once you find one of these folks, Please be sure that if you're going to connect with them, do not click this connect button, okay? Watch my lips, do not click this connect button because that will send them a generic invitation, okay? And that generic invitation doesn't give you the, uh, the opportunity to go look at them again and say, I'd like to connect with you because, by adding that note as an example, okay? And these are even pages that you might wanna connect up with and follow, et cetera. But here's, here's where you get to the more suggestions. Okay, et cetera. Now, now, one of the things that you might see here is you might go to someone's profile and you might see something like this. I'd really like to connect with Greg, but I can't because it doesn't look like I can. In other words, LinkedIn is telling me that the only thing that, I sh that it's showing me that I can do here is click message. Well, since he's a third degree connection, in other words, he knows, I know someone who knows someone who knows him. He's three degrees of separation, okay? The only thing that it shows me is this message button. Okay, now he is open to messaging, so it, I've, it allows me to do that as well on this one because he's paying for LinkedIn. But if someone doesn't pay for LinkedIn, it would ask you to buy LinkedIn in order to send them a message. Instead, all you ever have to remember is go to the more button, to the pull down on the more button and click the connect button here instead. And what that will allow you to do is clicking connect will give you the same thing that I got before when I click connect, and add a note and send them a note to actually try to, to connect with them, okay? That's about all the time I have for that because I wanna spend the last part of this on the final piece. So let's review. Profile, that's where it starts. That's where you tell your story. That's where you build your brand. That's where you show your value, okay? Back here, back here on your own profiles uh, page, okay? People, what we just talked about is connecting with people. And don't connect with anybody who can fog a mirror, but do connect with everybody who you might be able to help or they might be able to help you. And that's, that's a pretty wide variety of people, believe me, okay? And then the third P is participate. 
And there is a reason why that third P, participate, is the only verb among the three, okay? Establishing a profile is important, connecting with people is important, but participating on LinkedIn is where you, the rubber really meets the road because that's where you get to tell people what you think about things and you get to actually put out posts on your own. So there's a couple of different ways that you can participate. First of all, go to your own homepage and as you scroll down on your own homepage, you'll see all kinds of posts that are by people that you're connected with or, uh, or that have been liked by people that you're connected with. And you can literally then actually participate with them by doing one of three things or four things at the bottom of every single one of these things that's here, okay? And that would be, you can like it, and that's, yes, very much like Facebook, because Facebook's got other reactions as well. So when I point at like, it says I can like it, I can celebrate it, I can support it, I can love it, I can say it's insightful, or I can say I'm curious about it. That's nice, liking something is nice, but commenting on something is even better. Because when you comment on something, you get the opportunity to actually put your two cents worth in there or ask the person a question and start a conversation with a person that I don't even know, but I'm following on LinkedIn. So in order to communicate with someone, you don't have to be connected with them on LinkedIn, okay? So you can comment on their stuff and that will then start the conversation and that is how you participate. That's how you build your own brand as well. That's how you network as well and coming back to participating and commenting on, on people's stuff. And then thirdly, you can also share it. Sharing it is actually paying it forward. You can share it as your own post, and we'll talk about how you do posts here in just a second. And oh, by the way, if you thought that someone else who already is in your network might, be, might find this useful, then you can click send, and it will open up a message box, and I can type in the words Jerry, and it will bring up Jerry Snyder, and I can put out a message to Jerry Snyder that will send him a link to this so that he can benefit from this as well. So another way of participating with your network on LinkedIn. Terrific. Okay, now I'm going to back up, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the home page again, okay, because I want to show one other area where you can participate. That's liking, commenting, sharing, sending, those kind of things. The other place that you can do the, the, a, a, a participation on LinkedIn that is very, very powerful as well is you can start your own post. Now, when I tell people you should post your own stuff on LinkedIn, they go, well, I don't know what to post about. Okay, well, all right, here's something to post about, something you know about, okay? That something you're knowledgeable about is perfect. Pass along something to somebody else. Pass along somebody else's stuff. It, 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 it's perfectly fine. It, it goes out under you, but it's perfectly fine to share about somebody else as well. As a matter of fact, my most recent post was, was about a local gentleman that I will bring up the, the post, as a matter of fact, right here. The post was about a, a guy I know and I've known, been friends with for some years by the name of Brian Wagner. Shout out to Brian Wagner, okay? I actually already did shout out to Brian Wagner three hours ago, and I told people what I know about Brian, and I pointed people toward Brian, and oh, by the way, you know, I, I, in, in, that, in that amount of time, I've had, what, three hours, I've had 450 views of that, 10, 10 likes to, or, or reactions to it, and eight comments. So it's a matter of sharing your own stuff. But if you're not sure, you're still not sure what you might want to post, I won't have time to go through all this because I'm going to finish up with this one. Just click start a post, and LinkedIn will give you six different, up to six different templates. This may not look the same, by the way, because of different versions of LinkedIn and different instances that are context on LinkedIn, you may not have all six. But if you click start a post, you'll probably have at least four or five of these where you can celebrate an occasion, you can ask to find an expert, you can share someone else's profile, you can share that you're hiring. That's only because I actually own a company on LinkedIn, so that's why I've got sharing that you're hiring. You can actually create your own poll on LinkedIn, or you can then offer your own help in terms of what kinds of help that you are interested in. I would like to offer referrals. I would like to offer introductions to people. I would like to offer volunteer work to people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just walks you through that as a template as you generate that, that, that post. And that's a perfect way to go through the process and actually participate because as I said, that's where the rubber really meets the road. I think I've, I think I've just about gotten to the end of my time. Jerry, I'm gonna, give it back to you and we can go from there. 
Well, we have had some questions come in, um, okay. Jeff, and one of them was you alluded to uh, LinkedIn being free, but there's also a pay-in option. Could you elaborate on that a minute? Yeah, that's a great question. I get asked that question every single time. Every, every time you go to LinkedIn, you know, when you hit the button and, and you know, no matter where you scroll, up here in the upper right-hand corner, LinkedIn is going to say, wouldn't you like to buy us, okay? LinkedIn is a company, okay? And oh, by the way, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft, so they're selling services. But I got to tell you that I have been on LinkedIn since May of 2004, and I have never found it necessary for me to pay for LinkedIn. Hmm. There are groups of people who do pay for LinkedIn and should. Recruiters because they need special capabilities of recruiters. Salespeople who need a special capability and a special package on LinkedIn called Sales Navigator. Business people who actually, there is a business package for LinkedIn users out there as well. It does give you increased capability. But I gotta tell you, before you do that, okay, think about it in these terms. If you believe, 95% of the people that I encounter in every single one of my seminars haven't even scratched the surface of what they can do on LinkedIn for free. So I got to ask the question, how would paying for it make you any better at it? You should just delve into it and figure out what you can do for free until you run into something that you can't get around because I've been always been able to get around paying for LinkedIn. Now, by the same token, I want to finish that off by saying, look, hit the try free premium for a month. Go ahead and try it because you'll never know what other extended capabilities you get unless of course you look at their packages because that's what, you know, if you're using LinkedIn to find leads more effectively as a sales salesperson, then you're gonna have these two possibilities here. And when you select one of these plans, it'll tell you what the capabilities are. Okay, but look at it, try it, okay, for that month, but do me a favor. If you're gonna try it for a month, please beat it up. Beat it to death so that you know exactly what you get out of the, the, the money that you're about to spend for it after the free trial. And second thing, also do this for me as a favor and do yourself a favor. Five days before you actually do get charged, I don't care what it takes, put post-it notes on your refrigerator, put neon signs on your garage, but do something that says cancel this sucker before LinkedIn charges your credit card. Because in my experience, in all of the people that I've ever found that have bought LinkedIn, one of the, there are two words that LinkedIn cannot define, refund and prorate. <laughs> so from that perspective, make sure that you cancel it if you haven't found it to be useful to pay for LinkedIn. Well, that's, that's great advice, Jeff. Um, another question that came in, I think it's surrounding the issue of some of the difficulties Facebook is being scrutinized for and maybe maybe Zoom to some degree in terms of inappropriate information or listing or it, it, LinkedIn seems to be very, very clean in that respect. How is that monitor? How do they monitor that? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so for one thing, this is the internet. Okay. So yes, this is a piece of social media. And yes, you are going to find instances of inappropriate behavior of trolls or whatever you want to call them, okay, on LinkedIn as well. But there are ways of getting around that as well. If there is something that you don't, that you find offensive or that you find inappropriate about anybody's post or anybody for that matter, you can block that person, okay? So if I were to go to this person's profile, one of the possible options here is report this person or block this person. And I highly recommend that you do that because if you report them, and that's, that's two steps, by the way, you can report someone without blocking them. You can block somebody without reporting them, okay? Or you can do both. If you report this person, that will tell LinkedIn that this person's behavior is inconsistent with, their, with, with the proper behavior. And they will take a look at it. If you block them, by the way, you'll never ever see their profile or their stuff ever again. So that's an easy way to get around that one as well, okay? Now, also, by the way, if you are looking at stuff that is in your, in your feed, in your homepage feed, and you don't think one of these is appropriate either, the three dots is the magic menu here. You can then report this post as being inappropriate. You can, you know, you can unfollow the person, okay, if you're following the person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So from that standpoint, then report it, okay? Now, one of the things that's out there, though, when I want to 
So that's how you do that on any post, any, any post, or for that matter, any comment. If I wanted to report a comment that I thought was inappropriate, the three dots does the same thing here too, as you can see. But I wanna make sure that you understand here, okay, from, from the standpoint of, there's this thing out on LinkedIn called an algorithm, and LinkedIn is kind of using that algorithm, kind of like Pandora for professionals. Most people know what Pandora is nowadays, right? It's Pandora's the, the, the music system that allows you to do thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, those types of things, okay? Well, from that standpoint, you can do that as well by liking and commenting and sharing stuff. The more you like and comment and share, the more LinkedIn realizes you want that stuff and it will start feeding you more of it. So your interactions, and the more you interact, the better it gets, okay? But for heaven's sake, if you see spam, if you see inappropriate behavior, please don't like it, comment, or share it because LinkedIn's algorithm goes, oh, you'd like some more of that. Here you go. I'll give you a whole bunch more of that. So don't comment on the spam. Just report it and get rid of it. Well, Jeff, I think we've um, answered most of the questions. I think we had a couple people come on a little later in the program. So I don't know if you want to make some summary comments, but also importantly, I think you've, you've kind of stirred up our taste buds a little bit, and I think many of us want more. So maybe review again next steps or maybe even additional programs that you have planned. Well, I'm going to be here, uh, what Wednesday of the month is this? The third Wednesday? Okay. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to be back on COPEC uh, uh, every, every, every single third Wednesday of the month as far as COPEC is concerned. Right. If you want to check out more of my seminars, they're all done by Zoom now, and so that makes them pretty much global. But down here again on my profile, go to my profile, scroll down. Here's a schedule of the LinkedIn seminars that are open and free to the public and the ones that are you know, done for the local, local area. And they're all, all going to be done by Zoom. So if you open this one up, you'll see a schedule of where I can be found. Okay? And that's an easy way to do this. So in summary, again, LinkedIn, I got to tell you folks, you, know, you, you may have noticed how passionate I am about LinkedIn. I mean, I've been on LinkedIn for, for 13 years now since, you know, since 2004, 16 years now since 2004. And it just keeps getting better and better because I just have found a real audience out here. I found a, a, a real network out here. I found what I would call my tribe out here. And it, it's amazing to me. It's a wonderful, powerful tool, but you have to approach it correctly. And I guess the, the correct pr approach for me is that even in today's day and age with you know, Corona and, and everybody on lockdown, I don't spend all day on LinkedIn, but I do spend some time every day on LinkedIn. So that means updating my pro, so, so the three Ps again, update your profile, get your story straight, get your brand out there so that people can, can be there. And it's like a website, it's gonna be there 24 seven, 365. Your profile is the way to advertise, okay? Connect with people because it's a great networking tool. I can't tell you, I, I've had conversations already today with a person in the United Kingdom and a lady in Israel as well. So, and, and oh, by the way, I'm, you know, I've been able to converse with Jerry and, 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 and Jay as well because they're locals, but I can't, you know, I can't go out and have a cup of coffee with them anymore. So it's a primary tool for communicating with, for, with people for me as well. And then again, that final summary of things, is that you get out of LinkedIn what you put into LinkedIn. So that P of participate becomes very important for you to actually get involved and get your story out there and actually start to interact and engage with your network. Well, Jeff, I can't thank you enough. Very, very, very valuable information. And we appreciate you being with us and we'll look forward to you rejoining us in uh, oh, yeah. two days. So. Oh, it is nice to be back. I'm, I'm loving working with you guys again. This is great. Good deal. Hey, uh, everybody, please join us again every day if possible. Uh, look ahead. Use our uh, website for uh, updating on information. We loved having you today, and we will look forward to uh, having you join us tomorrow. Thanks so much. Namaste.